And members, it's probably no surprise that I would ask you to vote not to concur on this bill. I've been here only a few short four years, but I've heard from more senior members than myself that this is by far and away the most egregious bill that has ever been brought forward by this body. Now, I know that you've been hearing from lots of folks about this bill, lots of constituents. I know I have. But I'll tell you what, there's only one constituent that's contacted me that supported this legislation. And we did a back and forth email, and I expressed uh, the reasons that I had concerns about this bill. And I have not heard back from her since the last time. So I, I would um, just suspect that she's probably in agreement that there are some very problematic things in this bill. So lots of things have already been stated. Lots more will continue to be stated throughout the afternoon and evening and no matter how long we go. But um, I want to just address the parental notification. When I've been speaking with constituents over the past year and I tell them that in this bill there could be an incident with their child that could be reported to the, not climate center, now it's called the technical center, and they may never be aware of it. In fact, the first time a person may be aware that something is in their record is maybe when they're applying for a scholarship 10 years later and they see that this is in their permanent file. Members, this is absolutely wrong. As one of my colleagues said the other day, instead of um, a parent being the first person to know when there's a problem, they may be the last person to know. Is this what we want, members? Parents taken totally out of the equation? I'm not sure how many of you read uh, Representative Scott put out the um, article about Tom Travsvik. There's actually a video that his mother does. It, it's just heartbreaking. He, co he committed suicide, as she said, after being bullied on the bus, repeatedly bullied on the bus. You know, members, this bill does not fix that. There's no requirement for anybody, from staff, bus drivers, anyone, to notify a parent if bullying is going on. This young man was bullied over and over again, and yet his mother had no idea until after he committed suicide. Then the bus driver told her that the bullying was going on in the bus. I just think it's totally wrong that this bill does not address that. Do we think that parents should not be made aware of these things? And you know, whether your child is the one being bullied or bullying, I think the parents should be the first, the first to know, not the last. Now, I, I represent the Stillwater School District, and I can tell you they have an excellent bullying policy, and it's working very, very well. But now you want to burden the school districts across this state to between the tune of 40 and 50 million dollars, because you all, the Democrats, all think that you're better at, you're better equipped to deal with these issues, you're better equipped to tell school districts what to do. You know, yesterday we heard a bill about PEEP and the insurance companies and, and the state getting involved with the school board's decisions on that. And now today this. I, I would just like someone on your side of the aisle to tell me what exactly do you think the school boards are supposed to be responsible for moving forward? You're taking everything away from them. I mean, is there even going to be a need for a school board? Should we just have a state run a school board? I am a strong proponent of local control, and this bill is taking away the ability for parents, teachers, principals, and superintendents to handle situations that come forward in their districts. This is extremely troubling to me. The second thing I want to talk about today concerns the brain research piece. Now, I know there's no recommended curriculum for this bill, but um, on line 5.28, it talks about the developmentally appropriate programming, which um, we have learned that this book, this book, it's perfectly normal, is one of the recommended um, curriculum that, that could be used. Now, I've shown this book, uh, I was at my um, endorsing convention, and we talked about this issue there, and I've shown it around here at the Capitol, and I've shown it to friends, and you know what usually happens is people open it up and they slam it shut and they say, I don't want to look at this. This is disgusting. But yet we want 10-year-olds to have this as their curriculum. How can this be? How can we be doing something like this? <sighs> I'm so confused. I have four sons. 
or so concerned, I'm sorry. I have four sons and I have two uh, grandkids now. And I've known personally for a long time that putting explicit sexual material in front of young children is very harmful. I don't know if you all know that. In fact, when my second son was a sophomore in high school, he was expected to read a book in his honors English, English class. Um, unfortunately, I think, it was Black History Studies Month. The book was called Women of Brewster Place. That book contained a four-page graphic rape scene of a le lesbian. I was alerted about that book from a, a friend of mine whose son was in that class the year before, and I asked the teacher if my son could be given a different book to read, and he was. But I'm just wondering, with this kind of legislation, will parents even have any opportunity to do that anymore? Will we be able to go into schools and look at the reading lists and say, you know what, we just don't think this is appropriate for our kids? And I, I just think that parents, as Representative Abler said, parents are the responsible people for their children's education, not the state. So, um, you know, maybe you all think that's kind of strange that I would be paying that much attention and I should be trusting the teachers and whatever. But there is a lot of research that's been done on this issue, brain research you might call it. And I just want to, with your permission, read a couple of things here um, from a few quotes. Dr. Victor Klein is considered to be the world's foremost expert on sex education. And he says that sexually graphic images viewed by a child will be imprinted on their hard drive, leaving a child confused, changed, and damaged. The result is sexual acting out and sexual harassment due to the modeling effect or imitative learning effect. And another quote from Victor Klein, there is a very high rate of acting out when young people are exposed to pornography. Pornography further damages children and teens who view it because it does away with a value system such as trust, family loyalty, commitment, respect for women, love and marriage. And then from Stephen Kavanaugh, he's uh, written a book protecting children in cyberspace. Experts in the field of childhood sexual abuse report that any premature sexual activity in children always suggests two possible stimulants, experience and exposure. This means that the sexually deviant child may have been molested or simply exposed to sexuality through pornography. Pornography often, introduces, often introduced to children prematurely, um, sorry, pr pornography often introduces children prematurely to sexual sensations that are developmentally, they are un developmentally unprepared to contend with. So these are really, really strong concerns that I have members in using these types of curriculums. So, and I would just um, urge all of you to Google an interview with Ted Bundy. I think most of you remember who Ted Bundy was. He was a, a man who um, was executed for the serial murder of over 30 women. And he talks very candidly in an interview right before his execution about the fact that he was introduced to softcore pornography at a very young age. He um, found it in a convenience store. He was from a strong Christian family and a good family, but he was introduced to this early in life, and it led to an addiction where he reports that he needed more and more hardcore and violent pornography as time went on until he came to the point where he needed to act out on this. Members, we need to be so careful about this bill that we're passing and this potential for the curriculums that are being recommended. I don't know how many of you have 10-year-olds, or maybe you have grandchildren, or maybe you have um, neighbors, but I really, really would urge you to consider what I've talked about here before you vote to concur on this. Let's send this bill back, do some work on it, change some things that are very, very concerning, and like's been stated over and over, nobody, nobody on this side of the aisle, nobody in this chamber promotes bullying or thinks it's a good idea. I, I mentioned I have four sons. Three out of the four were, I think, seriously bullied in their time growing up. My, my son who's disabled was bullied. My son who is very, um, very bright was actually bullied for that very reason and called names because of that. I had a son who had severe acne. He was bullied because of that. I mean, I don't think that this bill would address any, any of those concerns at all. So, um, I, I do have a question if Representative Davney would yield. He will yield. Representative Lomer. Thank you, Madam Speaker. 
Representative Dabney, I'm just wondering if you can tell us how many states have passed this uh, same legislation with the same wording? wording? Representative Dabney. Madam Speaker, Representative Lomer, thank you for the question. This bill is a uh, expression of Governor Dayton's task force on the prevention of school bullying. Just as the bill reinforces local control in empowering not only school districts, but encouraging them also to reach out to their students, staff, parents, and community in developing a strong anti-bullying statute, or excuse me, policy at the local level, the task force's work looked nationally at trends, other states' actions, the positives and negatives, dove deep into uh, research and came up with a Minnesota-grown policy and set of proposals, including, uh, well, I'll stop there. Thank you. Representative Lomer. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you, Representative Dabney. Well, I was um, under the impression and have been told that there's uh, actually a national bill that's very similar to this, and so I was just curious if, if you know, have any other states passed anything similar to this? Representative Dabney. Madam Speaker, Representative Lomer, I don't know what's going on in the other 49 states, Puerto Rico and the District of Columbia. What I do know is, uh, and if you look in the packet of research that uh, supporting documents uh, and research document from uh, the University of Minnesota, they speak of the Center, of Di Center for Disease Control's research on this and the work they've done. I also referenced the U.S. Department of Justice's work uh, on pre this prevention of school bullying. The U.S. Department of Education has also done work on the prevention of school bullying. There are national efforts around the country, and the definition that we use uh, in this statute aligns with both definitions commonly used in the field today, as well as things like the Department of Justice's definition. Representative Lomer. Thank you, Madam Speaker and Representative Dabney. Well, I guess I just have one more question. Representative Dabney, do you feel that um, s local school districts are not able to address this issue? Representative Dabney. Madam Speaker, Representative Lomer, as part of the task force, uh, report and, or task force activities, it did listening sessions around the state, attracting primarily students and parents. And they adopted uh, what one of the students said uh, as kind of the, the motto for the, uh, for the task force in its report. And you'll find if you go into schools, uh, you'll commonly see anti-bullying uh, posters up on the walls. But powerfully, what a student said in Greater Minnesota was, there needs to be more behind the posters than just tape. Representative Lomer. Thank you, Madam Speaker and Representative Dabney. Well, I guess I will just uh, conclude my remarks, but I, I believe even if there's more behind the tape, that's better done by local school districts, superintendents, principals, teachers, parents, and children. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, it has been an extremely long uh, debate here, yes. and a good debate. And I'm going back quite a few hours now, but Representative Quam and um, his questioning, he was questioning the curriculum, and I was off the floor at the time, so I didn't quite hear his question, but I did think that I heard you say that we have obscenity laws that would apply to the curriculum. Is that correct? Representative Dabney. Mr. Speaker, Representative Lomer, uh, we have obscenity laws. Representative Grunhagen has been good enough to review those uh, for the body several times this year. Uh, but I don't recall uh, referencing them in my earlier comments. I may be mistaken. As you pointed out, it's been a few hours. There's been a lot of conversation. But I don't remember um, making that comment, no. Representative Lomer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, then, Representative Dabney, we do have obscenity laws, but are you uh, aware that they do not apply to school districts? Representative Dabney will yield. Representative Dabney. Mr. Speaker, Representative Lomer, I'm aware they do not uh, apply to school districts, uh, health care clinics, churches, and other uh, established religious organizations, churches, synagogues, mosques, temples, and the like. Um, and I think there are other 
some other uh, exemptions to allow for comprehensive sexuality education to occur in appropriate settings. Representative Lomer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, Representative Dabney, do you recall last Friday, I believe it was, Representative Grunhagen had an amendment to the Omnibus Education Policy Bill that tried to address this with our school districts? Representative Dabney will yield. Representative Dabney. Mr. Speaker, Representative Lomer, yes. Representative Lomer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, I just wanted to point out that uh, the DFL voted against that amendment, the entire DFL. So I, I just find that very curious, that, we would, that you would vote against an obscenity amendment, that why would schools be um, exempted from obscenity laws? Can you explain that to me, uh, Representative Dabney, why you'd be against that? Representative Dabney will yield. Representative Dabney. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Representative Lomer, I would remind you that, uh, if memory serves, that was a voice vote and not a roll call vote. Representative Grunhagen uh, is nodding to, to agree with me. So I'm not sure that you can uh, argue that the entire DFL voted one way or another because there was no record of that vote. Representative Lomer, our children deserve medically accurate scientifically based sexuality education and if their parents don't want them to have that they can opt out of that my 13 uh, year old currently through our church is receiving comprehensive sexuality and spirituality education it gives her the tools the knowledge and the skills to negotiate uh, growing up and the next years not only the next few years of her life but on into adulthood that's a choice her mother and I made, and we, we believe firmly it's the right choice. State law allows our church to provide that rooted in our spiritual tradition. Representative Lomer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Representative Dabney. I uh, can appreciate what you're saying. We did not have a roll call vote on that, but it was uh, definitely voted down, and it seemed like it was your side of the aisle that was voting no. So I, I'm sure not every single person over there did, but uh, the majority did. So um, my next question, um, Representative Dabney, has, I've been listening all afternoon, as we all have, to uh, you say over and over again that this is about uh, local control, this is about school boards and superintendents and teachers, and you've referenced parents quite a few times today that parents should have a say in control. So I'm just wondering if you can show me in the bill where parents are listed as being um, part of the process in this anti-bullying bill. Representative Dabney will yield. Representative Dabney. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Representative Lomer, I, it's not the only place, but I would direct you to 10.22 to 10.30. Representative Lomer. OK, thank you for that. Um, I, I'm going to look at it in a few minutes. I just have one more question. Uh, I'm just wondering, Representative Dabney, did you have any Republican input at all on the drafting of this legislation? Representative Dabney. Mr. Speaker, Representative Lomer, uh, there was no uh, partisan litmus test for uh, membership in the governor's task force. Uh, there is, has been no partisan litmus test for the organizations, uh, either here lobbying organizations who've engaged constructively on this, or the over 140 members of the Safe Schools for All Coalition who are in support of this bill. Representative Lomer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So the answer is no. Thank you very much. You know, I don't normally get up to talk a lot on the House floor, and now I've been up three times today, but I feel so passionately about this issue. I just can't not say. I mean, I am against this bill for so many reasons. Of course, the costs. Of course, what Representative Holberg talked with data pra practices issues. They're so real and serious. I talked about local control. We don't need this bill. We have school districts that are doing this job. But the most egregious and most important thing to me is the curriculum that will be used. And we've looked at this book before. And when I look at the line that says 5.29, 
Schools are encouraged to provide developmentally appropriate programmatic instruction, and I know that this book is on the list for that. I just can't not speak out against it again. This is pornographic. If you haven't seen it, please come to my desk. I would be happy to show it to you. You will slam it down like almost everyone else because it's gross. It's terrible. And I was thinking this afternoon, if I were to walk around my neighborhood, as I will do, and I'll walk around my district with this book this summer and, and campaign and, and talk about you know, why I'm running and, and what kinds of harmful things I think happened in the last session, which is what I'm going to say, and I'm going to show people this book, they'll be outraged. They care about their children. We care about our children. Do you not care about your children that they're going to see this kind of material? You, you care about bullying, but you don't care about this. And I'm not saying I don't care about bullying. We've got that established, but this is wrong. It's absolutely wrong, and I'm not going to stand here. I, I just beg you to look in your hearts and think about your kids and your grandkids and what they have to do. Vote no on this bill.